Practice test part three. Explain why atoms increase in size as atomic number decreases from right to left. So atomic size increases as you go from right to left. Why does that happen? Well, atomic size increases from right to left across a periodic table because the valence electrons are less attracted by the smaller number of protons in the nucleus. There are less protons in the nucleus for atoms over here than over here on the periodic table in a given period. The lower the number of protons for the nearly equidistant electrons, equidistant from the nucleus that is, means these valence electrons experience a reduced effective nuclear charge. That's question number one. Question number two, how much energy is absorbed or released when each of the following reactions take place? Use stoichiometric amounts. And you can see in here it's one to two ratio, and here one to two ratio. Let's do number one, and the answers are all given below down here for each one. Remember, it's always the summation of the bonds that are broken minus the summation of the bonds that are formed. And these will give you a good estimate of the enthalpy change for the reaction. And so the delta H for the reaction for the first one would be equal to the broken bonds in CH4. CH4 looks like this, and you usually have to sketch the Lewis electron dot structure and would contain one, two, three, four CH bonds. So it would be four times CH bond. Plus, the other bond that's broken is the O2 bond, two of them, by the way, because there's a two in front of here. And then oxygen is a double bonded species. So it would be two times an oxygen, oxygen double bond. And these would be my bonds that are broken on the left side. On the right side, then, my bonds that are formed are the CO2 molecule. So carbon, double bonded to oxygen, double bonded to oxygen. And so there are two bonds here, I and mean a double bond here, and a double bond here. And so there would be two times a C double bond O plus two times the bonds that make up water. And water, of course, has two OH bonds in it. But remember, there's two of the water molecules as well. So two of these means two of each of those, which is a total of four OH bonds. Now you need to look up what each one of these bonds is approximately worth right here on the bond energy chart. The CH bond, I'm going to start way over here, would be 414 kilojoules per mole. An oxygen-oxygen double bond is 502 per mole. And 2 times C double bonded O, which is 730 kilojoules per mole. And 4 times oxygen-hydrogen, which is 464 kilojoules per mole. If we do this math, we should end up with negative 656 kilojoules, which means that 656 kilojoules of energy are released. Question 2, 3, and 4 follow the same format where you do bonds broken minus bonds formed, and the answers are given below. Question 3, write the complete molecular reaction for the reaction of potassium metal with water. Potassium plus HOH means we'll get some potassium hydroxide and we'll get some H2 gas because potassium comes over and replaces the hydrogen. To balance this reaction, I believe we need a 2 here, which means we need a 2 here and a 2 here. And I think we end up with a balanced reaction. Write the net ionic equation for the reaction of calcium metal with water. So calcium plus HOH is going to give us some calcium hydroxide, which of course is a strong base because it's part of the B on the periodic table. 
and then we get some hydrogen gas once again. Now, calcium doesn't split because it's a metal alone by itself. Water doesn't split because it's a pure liquid. But on the right-hand side, calcium hydroxide would split. But before we do that, let's balance the reaction. I think I need a 2 here. And this will split to be Ca plus 2 and 2 OH minuses. And then the hydrogen gas, of course, stays together. So there's my net, net ionic equation where I don't think anything cancels. Write the complete molecular equation for sulfur dioxide reacting with water. Sulfur dioxide reacts with HOH. This is a non-metal oxide in water, which is going to make an acid, H2SO3. And then the last one is diphosphorus trioxide reacts with water. Once again, a non-metal oxide with water is going to make H3PO3. I'm sorry, H3PO4. Draw the Lewis electron dot structures for the molecules. So carbon and three oxygens and a minus two charge. First atom up on the periodic table. There are four valence electrons for carbon. Oxygen, six valence electrons times three plus two more because it's a negative two ion. So that's 1824. Carbon's right here, and there is a single bond, a single bond, and a single bond. But we'll find out that that doesn't work, because if I put six more electrons around each, it would be 8 times 3, which is 24. And then carbon would be electron deficient. And so I have to try a double bond, which now uses up 8 electrons put an unshared pair to complete the octets, unshared pairs to complete the octets, unshared pairs to complete the octets, and then you'd have to bracket it like this, and then put a little negative 2 in the upper right hand corner, and then you'd have to recognize that this double bond could also go here, or this double bond could also go here, and so technically you'd have to draw each one of the structures, C, single bond, double bond, single bond, and then you'd have to draw the last structure, and you'd have to show how they rotate or resonate that single bond. And I should complete the valence shell on each one of them. And I should put negative 2 in the upper right-hand corner of each one and draw an arrow like it switches between those three. Next, CH4, carbon is 4, hydrogen is 1, there's 4 of them, that's 8 total. Put carbon in the middle because it's the least electronegative. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's not actually, but it's the only one that can go in the middle. That's not hydrogen because hydrogen can never go in the middle. BRO2 draws the structure that satisfies the octet rule, bromine 7. Oxygen 6, there's 2 of them and I need 1 more because there's a little negative sign up here. 12 plus 7 is 19, plus 1 more is 20. Put bromine in the middle because it's much less electronegative than oxygen, and it's listed first in the formula, so there's a good chance that it goes in the middle. 2, 4, 20 minus 4 is 16 remaining. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 would complete the octet for everything. And then put brackets around it and then put a little minus one sign in the upper right hand corner and we have the BRO2 minus ion zip. Lewis dot structure. Krypton, eight, fluorine seven times four for a total of, uh, let's see, 28 plus eight, 36 valence electrons, I believe. Put krypton in the middle because obviously that's much more electro, less electronegative than fluorine is. Bond the fluorines around it. 2, 4, 6, 8. 36 minus 8 means we have 28 electrons remaining. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. Put the extra electrons on krypton. Krypton happens to be third period or below, and so it can have an expanded octet. Last one, HNO2. This one ends up having 
one electron for hydrogen, five for nitrogen, six for oxygen times two, so that's 12 plus six is 18 electrons. Uh, take and put the uh, nitrogen in the middle, bond the oxygens to it, put the hydrogen on the outside because it's an acid and so the oxygen is going to be connected to a hydrogen and that was the hydrogen that would be released when it acts acidic. Two, four, six, this would be um, 18 minus six electrons would leave me with 12. If I want two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, I'd end up with an electron deficient oxygen. So try a double bond. Now that leaves me with 10 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 now completes the octet for everything. More Lewis electron dot structure. Zero formal charge on sulfur means sulfur has 6. Oxygen is also 6 times 4 plus 2 more. So 24 plus 4 is 30, 32 electrons. Sulfur in the middle. Bond the oxygens around it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, uses them all up. Formal charge is not zero for sulfur though because sulfur has six assigned to it on the periodic table and it has one, two, three, four assigned to it right here and so it'd have a formal charge of two. To have a zero formal charge on the sulfur, you'd have to end up drawing this structure where sulfur is double bonded, double bonded, single bonded, single bonded. We've now used up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, which leads 20 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now put brackets around it, a minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 minus 6 equals 0 zero formal charge on the sulfur atom, so this would be the more correct one if we were drawing the one for zero formal charge on sulfur. NH3, NO2, unpaired electron resides on the oxygen, so nitrogen has five, oxygen is six times two, so that's 12 plus five is 17, NO, O, just making a guess here, 2, 4, 6, that leaves me with 11 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, electron deficient oxygen here, totally unfair, totally evil electron structure. Carbon, four, hydrogen, one each, there's four of them. And then it gives you like a clue here, it's an OH, so there's six from oxygen. And so you kind of read the structure just from the formula. One, two, three, that uses up uh, two, four, six, six electrons. And then we're gonna have an O connected to an H, because the H could never be in the middle there. And so then we put our unshared pairs in unshared pairs and count up the electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. This adds up to 14 as well. 14 electrons, Lewis electron dot structure. Four here times two is eight plus four more, ends up being um, 12 electrons. Carbons bonded to the carbon. And then if you have four hydrogens, two here and two here, you end up not having enough electrons to complete the octet. But if you try double bond, now you satisfy the octet rule. N2, H2, so if bond the ends together and put the H's on the outside, you know you have five here times two plus two more, that gives you 12. So we're just a little tiny bit short there because we have two, four, six, and we need a little more than six electrons to satisfy this. So let's try a double bond here, and then we put one little pair of electrons here, one pair here, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 minus 12 is 0. That completes the practice test.